What's going on guys? It's Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers and Evan is behind the camera right there. Hey everyone. And today we're on location in southern New Jersey taking a look at an amazing ecosystem, the salt marsh. Now this habitat is known for the variety of invertebrate animals that can be found and today we're going to be seeing how many species of invertebrates we can get on camera in just a couple days of exploring. So we stand the chance to see crabs, snails, just about anything that calls this habitat home, we're going to be trying to get it in front the camera. So let's get out into the environment and see how many invertebrates we can find. Tell us what's going on today, bro. So we're here in the salt marsh in a local marina where we know that there's a lot of wildlife centralized in one area. And we've come here to see how many species of invertebrates we can get on camera. And actually right here, we have our first specimen a beautiful little horseshoe crab. Wow, Take look at that. A look at this guy. This is a species we've actually filmed a video with that will be coming out in just a little while, so we'll have a full video on them coming soon. But this is a fascinating species, and we were only here a minute or two before we encountered this guy, so we're off to a great start today. All right. One of the amazing things about filming here in the marina is we get the chance to look at encrusting invertebrate life, which is not a group of animals that we get to come across very often. So take a look at this pylon here. You'll notice that there are actually two different species hanging out here. One, we have all these barnacles, which look like they belong to the acorn barnacle family. And when we know exactly which species they are, we'll throw it on screen for you guys. And I also want to call your attention down here to these mussels. Now these are Atlantic blue mussels, and they are absolutely everywhere out here. Pretty much any pylon, any hard surface out here in the environment is covered in barnacles and mussels. Now both of these species are filter feeders, which means that they anchor to one spot in the environment and will filter food particles like plankton and algae and detritus, anything out of the water, and that is how they make their living. So with the mussels, for example, these guys have a very special structure called bissel threads, which are the actual very tacky substance that they use to stick to the harder surfaces. And they really do look like threads. And the barnacles have a very similar structure that they basically use to glue themselves onto the wood and they will not move for the rest of their lives. Now the interesting thing about the barnacles is the way they filter feed is they have a structure called Siri, C-I-R-R-I. And that is basically a very feather-like appendage that comes out when they are situated underwater and that is how they bring their prey in. And the mussels have something called cilia, which kind of sit in between the shell there. So right now it's low tide, a lot of the mussels are closed up. But when the tide comes back in, they'll open their shells just a little bit and allow food particles to filter into their bodies. So this guy is the long-wristed hermit crab, by far the most common crustacean species we've been finding out here in the salt marsh. And though he may look pretty commonplace, this is actually a remarkable species. Now they're found along the Atlantic coasts of Canada and the United States, all along the intertidal zone. So that will include areas like tide pools and the salt marsh that we're in now. And these are actually incredibly adaptable survivors. So they're called hermit crabs because, as we well know, they inhabit the shells of other animals. So this guy's actually in the shell of a common periwinkle, and they will eventually outgrow that shell and have to move to a larger one. Now this species will stay relatively small, only about 1.3 centimeters at max size, so he's pretty close to fully grown, but he may yet get a little bit larger than this. Now these guys feed on things like carrion, aquatic algae, and zooplankton, so they will have a pretty varied diet out here. And they're so small that they have a number of predators. Other crabs, fish, and a ton of bird species will try and eat the long-wristed hermit crab. So they use that shell as a bit of protection, as well as camouflage. If we put this guy down into the silt, he could disappear in just a few seconds in amongst all the periwinkles. And these guys can be found up to 200 meters down into the water. So that's another surefire way to avoid a lot of predators. Another thing that makes the long-wristed hermit crab so interesting is how resilient they are as survivors. These guys are capable of withstanding extreme fluctuations in water temperature, pH, and salinity that other species simply cannot tolerate. And that's one of the reasons that they're so common here in the salt marsh ecosystem. And it's always a pleasure for us to come across these little guys as common as they are. 
check this guy out. This shell looks like something you might find in a gift shop somewhere, but in reality, this species is one of the top invertebrate apex predators here in the salt marsh. This is a knobbed whelk, which is actually a species of sea snail. So take a look at that body right there. This guy is incredibly large and is in fact the second largest species of whelk that you can find in New Jersey. And this particular species is actually the state shell of New Jersey. So we are really happy to get this species on camera. This species has a fascinating niche in the ecosystem. They are actually some of the top predators out here. The knobbed whelk feeds on bivalves, which are species like clams and mussels that have two halves to their shell. The knobbed whelk itself is what we call a monovalve, meaning that there's only one piece to the shell. And if you take a look at the body there, you'll notice this gray piece right here. That is called the operculum, which is a calcified plate that sits on top of the snail's foot and allows it to protect itself from a predator. So if something like an oyster catcher were to try and make a meal out of this guy, he would tuck his body all the way into his shell, and that operculum would make it almost impossible for any bird to get its beak in there. Now when you look at this animal, it's easy to assume that the large bit is the head. But in reality, the front, the anterior end of this animal, is actually this little thin part right here. So he has what's called a siphon, which is essentially what he breathes with and also what he uses to interface with the environment. So he can take in particles out of the water and sense where his prey is and these guys are very powerful hunters. What they will do is if they find something like a clam, they will use this very sharp edge on the front of their shell there to actually crush open the shell of the clam and then they will eat the fleshy inside part. So this is a fascinating species that a lot of people have seen before in areas like gift shops, but have never thought of as a powerful predator. And that is one of the things we love about the knobbed whelk. They are such a fascinating and unique species out here. Take a look at this. This is a polyphemus moth, a very common and very large species of moth that we find all over North America. Now, we were not expecting to see this species today. Evan and I just got back from the salt marsh and we came across this little girl right in our backyard. Now, the reason that we believe this is a female is because of her antenna. If you look, they're rather thin and not very feather-like. Male polyphemus moths have much larger, bushier antenna, which allow them to sense the pheromones that the female releases to signal she is ready to mate. One of the interesting things about the polyphemus moth is that they only live in their adult stage for about a week. These guys don't even have mouths, so once they emerge from their chrysalis as an adult moth, they do not eat. All they do is fly around and look for a mate and lay as many clutches of eggs as possible. So this little girl is probably not going to live for very much longer, but she is an absolutely beautiful species and we are so happy to feature an animal on the channel that we've never actually filmed before. She is just so cool. And they call them polyphemus moths because of those two eye spots on the hind part of her wings. It looks a little bit like the eyes of the Cyclops polyphemus from Greek mythology. What a cool little moth. Though on the surface it appears as a lifeless wasteland populated only by sawgrass and the occasional bird, the salt marsh is a complex and biodiverse ecosystem and one of our perennial favorites to explore. This video covered just a few of the species we encountered on our expeditions in the marsh this summer, and there will be several more adventures in this series. One of the most diverse and abundant invertebrate groups in New Jersey is the crabs and our next episode from the salt marsh will feature some truly wild and feisty crustaceans. If you enjoyed this video and are excited for more, be sure to leave a like on it and tell us in the comments down below which species was your favorite. And don't forget to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now so you don't miss all of our new videos coming out very soon. Bye guys!